So, okay, hi, or good morning for most of us. Uh, I'm Martin Koschal, and I'm here from uh, the to talk you something about the archaeology and 3D models uh, and how it works and what I do. So, uh, there is some main topics that will be discussed. It's uh, about my department, uh, 3D Atelier, where I work and study also archaeology. Something about virtual archaeology, how it works, what's going on here, uh, what type of data sets are available for 3D and 3D modeling, rendering, uh, and so on. And uh, at the final, there will be something about the project Arco models that I start. So, uh, you can hear, there you can see the uh, location of Brno, that's the second biggest city in Czech Republic. And in this city is a really cool uh, university called Masaryk University. Uh, at this university at Faculty of Arts, there is a department of archaeology and museology. And there is, we've got the 3D atelier where I work. Uh, we are speciali our specialization is in the uh, spatial documentation, 3D modeling, archaeological visualization, and main workflow is in photogrammetry or image-based modeling, as maybe you know. Uh, and spatial analysis and 3D modeling. Uh, here are some photos from the sites when we look doing documentation. So, uh, if we are doing virtual archaeology or archaeological visualizations, we must work with archaeological data sets uh, and use them as a reference. But uh, we are more scientists than 3D modelers, so we must uh, use a uh, huge bunch of uh, softwares to do it easily and quickly because we haven't got time to do uh, everything in Blender. Okay. So, what we do inside Blender? We are doing modeling, also retopologizing of the 3D scans, we are doing sculpting, uh, optimize uh, everything for uh, routes for scanning, analyzing, rendering, and animation. So, that's all. Ah, that's a joke. <laughs> Here is some uh, 3D scans. We are doing 3D scans of artifacts, uh, like pottery or iron things, or scans uh, on site, so it's uh, documentation for ar archaeological analysis and uh, creation. Also, we are doing reconstructions of the artifacts to popularize, uh, popularize archaeology for people, even more reconstructions, and uh, not only the artifacts, we are doing reconstructions of whole sites and uh, even castles. So, what's the virtual archaeology? Uh, this is the term that used Paul Rayleigh in 1990 and is the usage of computer-based simulations of archaeological excavations. Uh, it's mean just classical visualization as uh, we know, but uh, in archaeology there is two main ways. There is the photorealistic renders, that's uh, only for uh, popularization of archaeology for the public, and also there is scientific uh, renders that uh, show the uh, how to say it, uh, the uh, val validation of the data that there create the visualization. Uh, basically, in archaeological visualization, there is, there is three basic LODs in the modeling. There is classic shape reconstruction, there is uh, second is virtual visualization. That's mean we've got the basic, uh, it's almost the same like ar uh, architectural visualization because you've got the basic construction. It probably worked that construction, but you cannot use the construction as a, or 3D model as a plan to rebuild a whole building in the real world. Uh, and it's the same with the materials. And virtual reconstruction, basically it's the uh, reconstruction of, of a whole thing and you can take this 3D model and build it in real world. So we always use virtual visualization because uh, we are always do huge areas, huge areas and there's lots of models and in two people it's really hard to uh, recreate uh, everything to the detail. 
So I've got here some case studies that I uh, done. First is Rockstein Castle. We are looking to do LiDAR data. Uh, Rockstein is a castle uh, and castle in the valley. It is speci specialization. Uh, it is here. Uh, and it, uh, we I done the reconstruction of the uh, state from the 13th century. For my bachelor thesis, I use Blender as a main modeling tool, uh, Unreal for the rendering, rendering because uh, that's a huge area, and Substance Painter for uh, texturing. So this is the look like uh, how it looks today. If you look to the plan, the black uh, spots are the remains uh, that was being archaeologically found in 13th century, no, from the 13th century, and this is the input data that I start basic import data that I start when with, uh, sorry. This is the data that uh, is in the start of my modeling. So uh, to recreate it uh, perfectly, I choose to uh, create a landscape, not only from the LiDAR data, but uh, create a smaller piece uh, that will be much more uh, precise. So I choose uh, photogrammetry for this. But uh, when you are working with photogrammetry, you know it, sometimes you uh, don't uh, catch everything and you've got uh, holes in the data and that's not good. So I decide to just fly around the castle, create a really uh, basic model to know where is uh, vegetation, where are the buildings and so on. And, uh, and this uh, basic, uh, I start uh, planning my road. So uh, the first thing to have got good photogrammetry result is a good overlap of the photos. A se and second is a ground sample distance. Do you know what is ground sample distance? No? Uh, that's the how many pixels are uh, for one centimeter at the photo. That basically means the resolution. If you take a photo of uh, the texture and you take a close up, you will be really high details and so on. But if you take a photo of the doors, uh, that's only black hole and nothing, no details. So that's the uh, ground sample distance. And uh, if you are doing uh, this type of scanning, you really need the consistency in ground sample distance. So uh, I uh, wrote this, uh, write this really uh, basic script. Uh, take a uh, NURBS, place a camera on that, take the parameters of this camera because uh, the GSD uh, depends on the parameters of camera which you use for photogrammetry and then I uh, play animation when the camera project the uh, black and white squares to the model and that visualize me the ground sample distance. This is uh, the basic visualization, and it's mean in the center there is really small squares, and as I said, the, at the uh, end of the picture, the, there is really big squares and uh, not so detailed data. So I create this road for every uh, part of the castle, every uh, tower and wall, and that helps me to reconstruct these 3D models and 3D reconstruction and create documentation uh, of the buildings and also of the terrarium because I can filter that out. Uh, here is uh, some other another scan of the uh, some environment from the location. Uh, as you can see, I use a blender for uh, retopology and uh, baking normals. And here is uh, a re retextured you know, model in Substance Painter. Uh, but if I want to put my data into uh, Blender, uh, I mean GIS data, uh, you know what is uh, GIS? Uh, Geographic Information Systems? Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> perfect. Uh, so if I want to put this data into Blender, I must uh, use GIS add-on. That's a perfect add-on. I absolutely recommend it. Uh, it uh, helps you to import uh, also LiDAR data, but uh, the shape files and so on from all of your data from the GIS GIS. So there is uh, LiDAR around, and this detail model is uh, from take from photogrammetry. I place it uh, in Blender uh, together, this. Uh, then I uh, use uh, shape files from the, uh, from the documentation from uh, the parts of the 13th century, that's the red points. 
and then I can start doing reconstruction exactly on the site and uh, do, uh, looking for some nuances, doing analyzing this thing uh, and so on. So here are some examples as I work. Uh, I must build a bridge that was uh, detected archaeologically. Uh, there is some uh, visualization how it can work uh, and it's uh, based on the archaeological data from the uh, Deutschland. There is a, that's research from 1980, I think, and they found a whole bridge uh, under the uh, uh, surface. Yeah, so that's the word. Okay, there is another thing like uh, buildings and uh, towers and constructions and uh, about every everything uh, the archaeology can tell us how it looks. So we've got uh, really huge collections of the uh, ground planes. In Deutschland is ground race, I think. Uh, also, there's found of uh, real constructions from the 13th century or 14th century in Czech Republic. That's fantastic. And at this basic, I can start building and doing reconstructions. Here is some examples how it looks in an Unreal Engine. And now let me jump to the Unreal Engine. I will show you the final data because I must import data from Blender to Unreal and it's me in the Terrarian 2 and so on. So uh, if I look quickly, you will see that's the really huge LiDAR data. The texture is not so good from this uh, area, but uh, I do some close-ups. Uh, basically, I used the uh, Unreal Engine because it has got LODs and I can uh, use lots of vegetation. And in 13th century, in Highlands in Czech Republic, there is lots of vegetation. So I choose Blender, uh, Unreal Engine for this. And this is the uh, landscape, how it looks like on the place. And there are uh, some nuances how and how it can look. Ah, I will slow the camera a little bit. Okay, there is uh, the complete structure, how it can look. And if I filter the buildings, you will see only the landscape. Uh, slide I want. Okay. So uh, if I want to import my LiDAR data into Unreal Engine, I must use the height map and recalculate it and it's uh, not uh, really good. I must discuss with the Unreal guy that was here. And it's uh, really complicated to get li LiDAR, exactly LiDAR data into your scene. Uh, it, in this uh, point, point, I just uh, used my uh, photogrammetry model place it uh, here and just scaling the height map to uh, match my photogrammetry model of the landscape. So this is the uh, about the uh, Rockstein Castle. And next is Virtual Arc project. That's an uh, international project uh, for valorize archaeological uh, locations and show them because uh, classical archaeological location is just a field. Yeah, because everything is uh, underground. So we create a virtual guide uh, for the mining uh, center from, from 13th century to uh, we use uh, Lumion as the rendering engine because uh, you know, the scientists from the archaeological department of archaeological of uh, Czech uh, Academy of Science use it. So I must prepare everything uh, for Lumion in Blender. And also we have SketchUp for quick sketches to uh, discuss it with scientists, uh, scientists because it's uh, much more quicker and they understand it better. I don't know why they like the SketchUp models, but they like it. <laughs> and uh, there is some quick video. It's the application for the mobile. You just uh, came to the location, uh, hit the point where are you and just you can look around you and uh, read some descriptions on it. That's the, uh, how to say it, uh, educational part of the application. And there is a storyline for the small kids uh, because uh, kids really like games, unfortunately. <laughs> uh, and it's uh, the story you know, itself is not so big, but it's uh, classically, if you know game books, that works the same. 
So there is some uh, view for this from this, and we can continue. Uh, to reconstruct views, also next uh, uh, data as uh, like dendrology that tell us uh, something about vegetation, geological profiles to tell something about uh, the vegetation. Also we use uh, geomagnetic uh, measurement, so we are able to reconstruct uh, buildings exactly on the place they, are, they was uh, without digging. And also we use LiDAR data and some analogy to start building. Uh, this is some example model, how uh, buildings looks like. Uh, it's a uh, motte, and uh, it's something like a uh, low-cost uh, medieval castle in the medieval. It's just the uh, building on the pike with some uh, defension around it. And there is wireframe. We really use basic geometry, but combine it with some scans and normal maps, and it allows us to create really nice looking, but still is a uh, result. Uh, second uh, is uh, to re no this on this picture you can see the workflow of uh, SketchUp and Blender, and the left side there is the re uh, SketchUp reconstruction quick how the ore mill can look like, uh, the mechanism, and on the second there is. Uh, 3D reconstruction of uh, that model inside the Blender. This is rendered in Blender in Cycles, I think, or EV, I'm not sure now. <laughs> and of course, there is some post-processing on it. Uh, next uh, picture, uh, the charge from the location, next visualization that we created for this uh, with Grassfeld, that's cool add-on. And also we must create humans so uh, we have got some uh, concept art that we uh, uh, must uh, use as a basic shapes. And we just, uh, again, we use the uh, optimized uh, topology, uh, sculpt uh, the uh, face, and there is final model. And Lumion has got the problem, he cannot uh, upload the animation, so it's just this uh, so-called sculptures. Uh, there is some references for landscape, such as LiDAR data, uh, Klondike, or uh, Highlands uh, with, without woods. And uh, when we build the, oh, of course, there is uh, some LiDAR visualization. And this is the site, how it looks uh, in real life. I'm sorry. Uh, also, we use illuminations for uh, to uh, see how it works in the past. And then we can start to reconstruct the actual landscape. We use particular LiDAR and uh, at the uh, ends, uh, we use only hate map from the uh, Google Maps, no, Google Earth. Uh, so we start building some uh, ways uh, placing the buildings, placing the other vegetation, and this is the final results. I've got a quick video for you. So this is the mi mining site from the 13th century in the Highlands in Czech Republic. As you can see, there is uh, lots of uh, buildings and uh, this is the ends of the mines, that pikes. Her there are some uh, 3D characters rendered in Lumion. It's not, I, I don't actually like Lumion. The character's not cool in that. <laughs> but uh, they want to use it, so I'll do the best to recreate it. Uh, but for landscape, Lumion is really cool. It's really fast rendering. And for scientists, I think that's the way for the scientists. So, that's the end of the showcase from this project. So, why it's important to use Excel data as a 3D modeler? Because time travelers. Yeah. Uh, that's mean if you are uh, modeling something and saying that's a little bit something like historical thing or medieval, uh, you, cannot, you cannot take things from the 11th century and place it, uh, or, sorry, you can take things from the 17th century and place it to the 11th century because uh, for lots of people it's like that. 
guy from the 1980 uh, year, ni 1980 years in 1930s. Uh, it's the same. If you you cannot take a Lamborghini, place it into the uh, 1930s and say this is the uh, reconstruction of the past or this is the 1930 render because everyone tell you, hey man, Lamborghinis are not in 1930s. So what kind of data sets uh, is fine for 3D modeling? Uh, it's really, it's depend what pe period you're really doing is if you are doing prehistory or you are doing uh, medieval things, but uh, these dat data sets are fine across all uh, periods. Okay, the first three are really cool for the landscape that can tell you something about landscape, how it looks like in the past. Uh, second is experimental archaeology, sorry, and documentation of artifacts. Uh, that's cool for tools or buildings. And uh, the last one are boreal archaeology and anthropology. Uh, I really don't uh, go in the deep in the last part here, so I will quickly describe it here. Uh, Burnell archaeology can tell you something about the socia social structures uh, and uh, social uh, position of the uh, human in the past. And anthropology can tell you lots of about uh, the height and weight and how they look like. But uh, this is more uh, anthropological things and uh, I will not discuss this here. But uh, I will tell you something about the landscape archaeology because it's cool. Uh, landscape archaeology uh, basically can be uh, LiDAR data, uh, UF or uh, UAV photos or classic photos, uh, historical maps, dendrology, uh, and uh, if you look to this picture, uh, there you can see uh, the uh, site probably from the analytic period and uh, there is lots of buildings and so on. Uh, and in it can look like uh, this part. That can tell you this is the vegetation, uh, vegetation, how is the word? Uh, vegetation signs uh, that mean uh, where is building, uh, the vegetation grow uh, different. Uh, next are uh, photos uh, from the uh, 19th century that's uh, called archaeology of modernity also. And, and these photos you can uh, see how the city or villages works and you can see all these small roads and every part uh, of the past life and you can really analyze it. Next uh, one are LiDAR data. I'm not sure, do you know what is LiDAR data? Someone knows, someone not. Uh, LiDAR data uh, is the, um, basically is the scan of the terrarium and it works uh, how we can look uh, you can see it here. Uh, the plane has got the sensor, uh, sent a laser uh, point down, uh, then register it, and because the plane and sensor know its uh, location and rotation, it's uh, available to uh, measure the terrarium. And it's cool because if you've got uh, this type of woods, you can say, okay, it's only woods, and it's not interesting, but if you look it in the LiDAR, you will see, okay, there are some structures. And if you will uh, read something more about the location, you will see, okay, it's the pre prehistoric files in the England. Wow, it's interesting. And it can tell you how the uh, landscape look at that uh, area and you can recreate it in your visualization. It's good uh, uh, resource. S uh, next uh, is uh, that mining area that I said, uh, show you and can continue. Yes, uh, historical maps. Uh, there is lots of historical maps, uh, especially from the 18th century, or of course, uh, maybe for the half of the Europe. And they tell you about the 
uh, usage, landscape usage. So there are fields, there are grass, there are uh, trees and woods and so on. So it's really good if you want to do something in medieval age. It's uh, almost the same because these uh, type of parcels are uh, in the medieval too. And how to get these sources? Uh, there are some uh, links there you can find them. Uh, don't be scared that is uh, in uh, that uh, point CZ. Uh, it's Czech sites, but in English also. And perfect thing for the uh, for the uh, what? Uh, not for reconstruction. For uh, if you use it. Uh, the data as a uh, reference, yes, for the referencing is uh, server academia.edu, uh, uh, where you just type uh, that thing that you are interested in, and this server find you uh, scientific scientific uh, scientific articles about that, and you can imagine how it works, and then you can recreate it. And also, I've got the dendrology in the landscape archaeology because that tell you the uh, you know, everything about the species that uh, of the trees. Uh, and quickly, there is a geology and settlement archaeology that tells you everything about uh, settlement, how it works, how it looks, and uh, something about the uh, ground planes of the buildings, and you can start doing reconstruction like this because uh, it's a little bit tricky because uh, settlement archaeology can tell you lots of things about the distribution, but you must uh, do lots of researching and uh, look to the experimental archaeology, how uh, look the things that uh, are about the ground, about the ground. Yeah. Uh, for this, I just picked these two uh, big projects that you can uh, just search and look at them. There is lots of uh, settlements and so on, and you can read about it and use it maybe as the reference. Uh, and the last thing is documentation of artifacts. Documentation of artifacts can tell you uh, the generation of, uh, oh, not generation, but uh, how how to say it, uh, how artifacts uh, go are created or and how they are, they are about something about their, their, their types uh, and uh, datation. Uh, you can use these classical drawings and so on, but it's, it's not good. So our department has got a huge library of 3D scans uh, of uh, vessels and uh, so on. I can show you on Sketchfab here. So basically it's something about one or more hundred scans that you can use as a reference. Just type it. Actually it's in Czech but we are working to uh, recreate it for, uh, or recreate it, translate it to English. And it's in Sketchfab so you can rotate look at how it's uh, created and use it as a 3D reference that is not modeled, that is scanned. Okay. And the last thing that is really cool for artifacts are illuminations. Uh, I've got another type for you, uh, that's this site, uh, that's full of illuminations. Uh, with datation and illumination can tell you lots of about the characters, light landscape as you saw, uh, and so on. And here, on the only on this picture, you can see the style of the dresses, uh, weapons, uh, how look armor, uh, how look uh, underdresses, clothes, and so on. And it's really cool if you just start analyzing it. Uh, I will show this uh, again. In this manuscript is you just type search, choose your location, or where are you from, and maybe for this we Netherlands, I'll just type search, and then uh, it shows you tons of and tons of illuminations with datation, and if you click it, you can go to the original file, to the uh, libraries, and have got the. Uh, uh, all data that is uh, 
that you can have got for the illumination. Okay, so I'm almost in the finish. So there is experimental archaeology. Uh, how uh, in experimental archaeology can tell you how I said the things, how that looks uh, about the ground. And so quickly about project Arco models. Uh, I started this project as my master studies thesis, and uh, it's uh, based in creating of 3D high quality 3D scan or models that will be described from which period uh, they are, and you can uh, after that you can download it. Uh, so there is some examples of uh, this is a kind of armor from the medieval, the 3D scan, retopologized, optimized, and there is also this kind of boots. Oh, shoes, sorry. Yeah, and that's uh, the main idea what we will, what I will do. Here is some artif uh, another artifacts or even swords will be here. So thank you for your attention. Have a nice day. <laughs> and uh, use your power as a 3D artist to popularize everything from the science at school. <laughs>